at the beginning of the pandemic, there was a woman named Kelly Kenny living in California who was going through a very hard time. Kelly is a photographer, and so the beginning months of the pandemic meant loss of gig after gig after gig. She was worried about how she was going to pay her bills, what she could do, when it would end. She had just broken up with her longtime partner and was grieving not just the loss of that relationship, but the loss of the life she dreamed they would share together. And because of COVID, she was dealing with all these losses and couldn't even leave her home. The only distraction she had was her cat. And so every night, she would go out for a walk around her neighborhood, hoping to clear her mind and regain some connection to her heart. One night, something caught her eye. As she was walking along, she spotted something sparkly near the base of a tree in one of those sidewalk little squares where the tree emerges from the square. And as she tuned in to look at it, she noticed that there was a tiny little fairy door set at the base of the tree, surrounded by colorful pinwheels and painted stones and all sorts of whimsical and fanciful objects placed together with intentional purpose. She leaned down to watch it, looking at it in awe. And then she noticed on the tree above was a sign. It was a picture of a little adorable girl. And a sign that read, Our four-year-old girl made this to brighten your day. Please add to the magic, but don't take away. These days can be hard, but we're in this together. So enjoy our fairy garden and some nicer weather. Kelly was in love with this project. She walked home thinking about that little girl and about her fairy garden and about what she could bring back to add magic to this little girl's day. The next night, she brought a letter along. She decided that she would become the fairy in the tree. She named herself Sapphire and wrote to the little girl telling her that she lived in that tree and if this little girl would only complete three acts of kindness, she would bring her a special surprise. She put that later there and then waited and waited and waited until the moment when next she came by the tree and found a glass bottle with a piece of paper inside waiting for her. Inside, the letter read, Dear Sapphire, thank you for leaving the note in my fairy garden. I did the things you asked. I sent mail to five of my friends and family telling them nice things. I picked up trash and recycling around our neighborhood today. And I set the table and helped mommy and daddy with chores and with my baby sister. I am so happy you live in this tree. I made a picture of two piggies for you because they are my favorite. I hope you like it. I love you. Also, I promise to be kind and brave and always show love to those in need. Signed, an adorable four-year-old handwriting, Eliana. That note made Kelly's day. Where before she had spent her time grieving the loss of love, the loss of her work, she now found herself thinking often of this little girl and what she could do to brighten Eliana's day. She ordered elf ears and then created a whole series of photos with herself in elf ears, photoshopped so she looked tiny against her large cat or against the backdrop of their neighborhood. She dropped off fairy dice that she made with sparkles and magical little stones and rocks and treasures. She gave Eliana stuffed animals and art supplies. She crafted letters, letter after letter after letter, in which she told Eliana to be kind and caring and encouraged the little girl to follow her heart and express all of her creativity, the kinds of letters Kelly wished she had received as a child. As Eliana's parents shared with the New York Times, those letters, that attention, those little gifts made Eliana blossom 
When the pandemic started, she had started to retreat, and so her parents thought maybe this garden would bring her some light, but they never imagined that she would connect with someone who would care so much, who would go so far out of her way to make a difference in this little girl's life. It was an incredible symbiosis. Both Kelly and Eliana ostensibly worked on that magical fairy garden and brought treats and specialties to make someone else happy. But over the course of the fairy garden, over the course of these last nine and a half months, they found that bringing gifts to the garden made them happier. As Kelly shared, doing this every night gave me purpose in a horribly painful and lonely time. I looked forward to my days again, and I started ordering art supplies and little trinkets to leave her. We wrote back and forth, helping each other to feel less lonely. And here's what's just so interesting. Before Kelly found Eliana's fairy garden, she had been doing everything in her power to get herself out of her funk. She was eating right and going on walks. She was doing mindful thinking and focusing her attention away from her pain as much as she could. But no matter how hard she worked, she couldn't seem to get out of the pain and loneliness that took over her life. And then seemingly without any effort, once she discovered that garden, when she started thinking about someone else, everything in her life shifted. Everything became better. This is a dynamic we see so clearly in our readings for today. In our Haft Torah, we are sitting with David HaMelech at the end of his life. David was arguably one of the most successful people to ever walk this earth. He went from a scrappy shepherd defeating Goliath to a worldly king, building and strengthening the city of Jerusalem and the Jewish people. He is the author of our Psalms. He is the forefather of Mashiach. But the challenge David faces is that he experiences validation through personal accomplishment. He sees everything through the lens of me. And that leads him to problems. When he falls in love with Bathsheba, He sees no problem with having her husband killed, keeping her for himself, because his validation is in his own life, and that will make his life better. He sees every military victory as about him. And when he reaches the winter of his years, when he can no longer be out campaigning, no longer out fighting battles, he becomes bitter and angry. He cannot find validation anymore because there's nothing more he can do. And so he lies raging on his deathbed, telling Solomon how to kill his enemies, what to do in his absence, with vitriol and anger. By contrast, Joseph doesn't search out meaning in his own accomplishment. Instead, he measures success by the ways he is able to help others. That means that he can endure untold suffering, being thrown in a pit, sold into slavery, back into jail. Every single step of his journey, he doesn't experience as a personal set down. Instead, he thinks, how can I help the people around me? That means when his brothers come back, he's able to forgive them because it's not about him. His life is about the people around him. He's able to rekindle meaningful relationships with his family. He is able to live at peace because his life is not about him. It's about the people around him. It's so easy to fall into David's trap, to think that our lives are about us, particularly this time of year around New Year's when everyone is making resolutions. And we think, 
If only I could eat healthier, if only I slept more, if only I could fit in a smaller size, or if only my alarms were a larger size, if only I read more self-help books, or if only I did more intentional thinking, if only I worked harder, if only I worked less, if only I, 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 then I would be better, then I would be happier. But the more we focus on ourselves, the more we focus on what's missing from our lives, on the ways we've done wrong, the less happy we are. Often it's only when we shift our focus to someone or something else that we're able to find the joy we were missing all along. As Rabbi Harold Kushner shared so beautifully in his book, When All You've Ever Wanted Isn't Enough, You don't become happy by pursuing happiness. It is always a byproduct, never a primary goal. Happiness is a butterfly. The more you chase it, the more it flies away from you and hides. But stop chasing it. Put away your net and busy yourself with other more productive things in the pursuit of personal happiness. And it will sneak up on you from behind and perch on your shoulder. No more chasing butterflies. As we enter 2021, let's commit ourselves to not searching out for happiness, to not looking for ways to be better because of us, but instead looking for ways to build fairy gardens, to give others, to make others smile. No more New Year's resolutions about me. This year, let's resolve with one another. Let 2021 be the year that each one of us does everything we can to make others smile.